for that very special case. But for all the other cases, we end up actually with an algebraic equation. So this, uh, this is an algebraic equation. And then we made a fair number of assumptions and notation changes. We said uh, let CP0 equal the sum of theta i times CPI. Let's assume Delta CP is approximately zero. Let's assume that sharp work is zero. Assume that the mass flow of the heat transfer medium is really high. So that allows me to say that the ambient temperature coming into my reactor is the same as the ambient temperature leaving the reactor. So let's assume that, and that implies T ambient 1 is approximately equal to T ambient 2. So if we make all of those assumptions, we get quite a, quite a good simplification of the equation we ended up using in last night's class where we had the heat released term and we had the heat generated term. So we had those two terms and they, they need to be equal to each other at steady states. If the heat released is not equal to the heat generated, we have an unsteady state system and that's really beyond the level of study of this course. Right? So if this course continued on to a fourth year level course, that's exactly where we would begin. But for this course, we're really just considering so, so making those assumptions, we got the equation we used last night is Q dot over the flow coming in minus that C T naught term heat capacity T minus T naught minus Heat of reaction times conversion. And that's equal to zero at steady state. Okay, so this is R of T. G of T here em emphasize that that is the negative heat of reaction multiplied by conversion. This is the, the generator. So the negative is included in that. But it's the heat released plus heat generated must net out to zero. So a little bit more that we can write about G of T. It's, it's quite clear from the convention of our signs that G of T is positive for exothermic reactions. G of T is negative for endothermic reactions. Just some, some more, more points about the sign convention, just so that we don't get, get uh, tripped up here. That Q is positive if heat is added to the system. So Q dot is positive if heat is added to my reactor. So last night we saw a case where Q was negative because we were dealing with an exothermic system and, and removing heat out. But uh, Q's sign convention is such that if it's greater than zero, we're implying that heat is being added. Um, and to emphasize that we can Notice that the Q is equal to U, the heat transfer coefficient, multiplied by A, the heat transfer area, both positive quantities, and then T ambient minus T. So for that to be positive, it implies T ambient exceeds T, means heat is flowing into the reactor.
Then uh, just a final summary then, we looked at a bit of new notation we introduced to help us out with these problems. We introduced a term called kappa dimensionless number. That's the product of u times a divided by the inlet flow fa naught divided by cp naught. We also introduced a term called t sub c. That's equal to kappa multiplied by the ambient temperature plus the inlet temperature to the reactor T naught divided by one plus kappa. If we make that, make those substitutions into the original heat balance, you can actually show quite easily that it's no more than a half a page of algebra, but it's a little bit tedious. However, you can get CP naught one plus kappa multiplied by T minus TC. That term is then equal to minus heat of reaction times conversion. So notice that term here is simply equal to G of T. sign convention, this would actually get to minus R of T. Okay, so you can easily prove to yourself that R of T over there is written up here. If I sub in that Q dot is this new T ambient minus T, I work through a bit of the algebra simplifying this kappa and TC you'll find that this term simplifies out to minus R of T. And then just one final point here is, it's actually quite useful to recognize that the design equation for CSTR, this is really where we most often use this sort of expression after CSTR. The CSTR is recall the design equation So uh, we derived that in the context of CSTRs. 
it does actually work as well for plug flow reactors for co-current flow. We, we didn't look at plug flow reactors with co-current and counter-current flow, but um, I'm just letting you know that, yeah, absolutely, this could work for that sort of situation. The reason why I didn't study heat effects in, in plug flow reactors with co- and counter-current flow is because the only way you can solve those problems is with a huge ODE solver, and it becomes really messy to do that. And I figured he hasn't done enough of it in the solver. Don't need to consider that special case. But CSTRs with heating, that's something you're almost guaranteed to come across in practice. Um, is, a, is a tank with a jacket around it that's transferring heat. And so understanding this uh, GOT and ROT terms and investigating it like we did last night, what's going to happen if someone cuts off the heating in here? Um, what's going to happen if my conversion is zero? Um, if my heating medium cuts off, what happens, in other words, when Q dot goes to naught? In other words, Q dot set to zero and that implies a diabatic operation. So what's going to happen if my inlet temperature suddenly rate is raised by 10 degrees? So all of that, all of those useful practical questions can be investigated with that heat balance being the process. Okay, so that wraps up the the heating section and the section on state-state non-isotope.